Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is predicting the end of the U.S. empire because of our massive debt. He said, and I quote, how long can a government with a $16 trillion foreign debt remain a world power? Then he went on to point out America's weakening stance in the world. I want to throw up, but he's got a point. And we have Obama and the progressive approach to foreign policy to blame for it. What does this mean for our allies when it comes to foreign policy going forward? Well, joining me, the former commander for Army's Delta Force and Green Berets, and he also served as the Undersecretary for Defense in the Bush administration, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, and uh, our friend Dr. John Parnell of UNC Pembroke is joining us for the second segment on this as we promise to talk more about debt. Uh, General. Uh, yes, Andrew. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I seem like I'm at a loss for words here. When Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is actually getting it right about our problems, this is not the great Satan stuff. This is actually like he's got our debt in his sights. Shouldn't we all be afraid? Well, yes, absolutely. You know, this is the first thing that I've ever agreed with Ahmadinejad on, but he's right. And I think that uh, uh, at, at least half of the electorate in uh, the United States is totally ignorant of what uh, the guy is saying, but there is a reality to it. Uh, Dr. Parnell is an economist, and I think he can tell you that we cannot sustain uh, the kind of debt that we have, the kind of spending that we have, and remain a, uh, a global power. We just can't do it. You know, we were listening to our European friend talking about the way these programs create permanent constituencies, and nobody's going to vote against them once they get them. The Europeans are the model. We are following their bad example, and our state sponsor of Terror Enemy is calling us out on it. And it seems like, and the general's right, 47%, Mitt Romney's 47%, don't seem to care or get it. It's sad, but, uh, but he has a point. And again, if you think about the direction that our country's going, and you, and you just sort of think of the trajectory that, that Europe has taken, we're not that far behind. Uh, add to that the fact that, particularly in the last four years, we see this sense that government can step in and change the rules of the game if it wants to. A good example of that is in the GM Chrysler bailouts. The bailouts, obviously, were changing the rules, but... You know, the, the bondholders got the shaft. You know, in, in, a, in a traditional type bankruptcy, the bondholders should have been able to re, uh, recoup some of their investments, and they didn't. So what we're seeing is that a government comes in and says, we can decide what's right. We can decide what's best for the moment. And there is no sense of contract law or morality there. That is the fundamental uh, collapse of a system when you, when you lose the respect for law. General, I got a serious question here about military spending. Of all the things the federal government supports, supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be, as the Constitution says, raising and supporting armies and navies. They're supposed to be spending on our military and national defense. Right now, Ahmadinejad is licking his chops at the idea of a collapse of the United States. And what are we doing? We're cutting our military budget. This makes absolutely no sense. You know, Andrew, uh, first of all, you're right. The first uh, responsibility for any administration is to protect the nation uh, from threats, domestic and uh, foreign. Now, that said, we will cut our Navy under both programmed cuts as well as the sequestration cuts. We'll cut our Navy to uh, pre-World War II levels. We'll cut our Army uh, back to pre-World War II levels as well as our Marine Corps. And we have not uh, modernized our nuclear program in uh, over 25 years. And by the way, with these limitation treaties that we have had in the last couple of years, the, the Russians outnumber us uh, by a large margin in terms of tactical nuclear weapons. So you won't see them coming back asking for more negotiations. And we're still cutting. We're not modernizing. We're not investing in uh, the future in terms of R&D. Uh, there are lots of things that are going to reduce um, our real capabilities to defend this nation and make us more vulnerable than we have been since, uh, I must tell you, since probably the turn of the last century, the, 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 the 20th century. 